Yeah, uh, my name is Pei Wang. Uh, I was interested in the uh, study of uh, artificial intelligence a uh, long time ago when I was an uh, undergraduate student uh, right here at Peking University. Uh, accurately speaking, that's about 30 years ago. That's the year I graduated from uh, the college. Uh, then I become, uh, became an uh, undergraduate uh, graduate student. Uh, in the same university, so I, that's where I work out uh, most of the basic ideas behind my project. That's a long time ago, and uh, then in 1991 I went to the to, to the USA and uh, begin to pursue my PhD uh, under the direction and supervision of uh, Professor Douglas, uh, Douglas Hofstadter uh, at the Indiana University. So. Uh, there I developed uh, the idea I got at Peking University into a dissertation uh, which I defined that, uh, in ninety six. So after that uh, I cannot really find a place to continue this research. So I worked in several different places uh, but continue this uh, ideas and some of the work uh, in my own time. And then uh, I joined my mind uh, in '98, after working at several uh, AI applied AI company. So uh, I worked with Ben Gozo there, uh, uh, still under the name of of AI. Uh, the, the phrase of AGI was invented uh, several years after that. Uh, but I was involved from the very beginning in, in this small community. So that's kind of like the the story of my relation with with the ATI community. Yes, uh, I was uh, the PhD student of Douglas Hofstadter, and he he likes uh, some of my idea, yeah, my ideas, even though he doesn't completely agree with my approach. Uh, but even though that's the case, he's uh, very nice and also very open-minded. So he still supported me uh, to finish my. Uh, dissertation work there, and uh, I have had some very, uh, very good time. I would say that's in that period of time, and uh, under his guidance, and also participated in many uh, interesting discussions in his group, and uh, can still keep our our difference uh, with respect to how to do AI. <laughs> uh, Go to Ashabah uh, is the book uh, which actually bring me to Douglas Hofstadter because uh, I'm one of the translator uh, that translate that book into Chinese. Uh, that's how we met in the first place. So it's at the very beginning it's the book, and then we communicate about our research. Then we begin to find some interesting uh, common ideas. That then uh, he brought me to into his team. So that everything started with the, from the book. Uh, I, I think that book is, is a great book. Uh, it contains uh, so many interesting ideas which triggered uh, a whole bunch of people uh, to get into AI, um, into cognitive science, uh, even into AGI. Excellent. Yeah, it's yeah. certainly an influential book on AI. Yes, it is. It still is. Uh, even after so many years, many of his ideas uh, still, it's not really outdated. Uh, you can still read it, and it's meaningful. Yeah, definitely. Well, what, what what's your favorite ideas in Godola Shabak that you think sort of mentioning? Well, it's really hard to say. Uh, it's just way too many of them. Uh, he shows us uh, many things that people taken to be unrelated uh, are actually related to each other. Uh, I think if I want to pick a single concept, uh, I think it's the concept of level. It's not really, for me, it's not really the concept of strange loop, which is probably the most famous concept notion promoted in that book. Uh, I think for me it's the, the concept of level of description. Uh, he argued in many different way that uh, the same system can be studied at different level of description, and uh, you actually can get a very different picture uh, just because you're observing it at different levels. 
And this is a notion still, uh, it's very important for the ATI community. Uh, many of the debate, even some of the debate today, uh, happens because of uh, that kind of issue, because people tend to describe uh, things at a different level of description so that they get different pictures. Yeah, that model is called NARS, uh, stand for Non-Axomatic Reasoning System. So it's N-A-R-S. Uh, the basic idea is uh, my take of intelligence uh, is probably slightly different uh, from some of the people in the field. Uh, I don't think AI's job is to actually duplicate uh, the human mind in detail. Uh, instead, I'm trying to looking for, uh, we can say it's the, the law of thought, or the very general level principle behind human thinking process. And I try to summarize that and uh, to implement that uh, in a computer system. Uh, what I've got uh, in this years, uh, I think, is uh, I take uh, intelligence as a form of adaptation. That is, the system need to make a change uh, according to the environment to survive or to achieve its other goals. And also, uh, I believe those adaptations are under very strong restriction of the knowledge and the resource the system has uh, at the moment. Uh, here, by resource, I basically mean uh, computational resource, especially uh, processing time and uh, storage space. So basically, the, my assumption is uh, intelligence is not the ability to solve all problems. I don't think that's possible. Or uh, the ability to always find the best solution. Also, I don't think it's possible. Uh, so for me, intelligence is the ability to find the best solution among the ones that can be found, given the system's knowledge and the resource. Uh, so I developed a formal model uh, to realize this, this kind of principle and implement that in a computer system. So clearly I'm far from finished, but uh, I have achieve some kind of interesting results. Okay. Well, how long do you think it will be before you, you expect to get results significant enough to raise people's eyebrows who are not directly related to AGI? Um, like, um, I don't can... know. I never have a good answer for that question, uh, just because uh, it depends on many things. Depend on uh, the resource I can get, of course. Uh, and also depend on how soon I can I can solve some of the problem I'm facing uh, in the project, which is really uh, it's not a typical engineering project, which you typically do have an estimation about uh, how you can finish what. Uh, but for a typical scientific research project, very often you you simply don't. Uh, so AI or AGI is complicated because it's both scientific research and engineering. So that uh, if we finish the science part, that is, when we have a reasonably good theory, then I think we can make realistic estimation about how long it will take to build a computer according to that theory. But now uh, we don't have that theory yet. So yeah, to actually estimate how long it will take to develop a theory, uh, it's very hard if not impossible. Uh, like many other concepts in science, uh, AGI is not a clearly defined notion. I, I don't think it's going to become a clearly defined notion very soon. Uh, but still, uh, there are some features uh, that uh, separated from the conventional, what we call AI. Uh, roughly speaking, the idea is to build a computer system which kind of like human uh, in a certain sense. Uh, but uh, if you ask different people, uh, they actually tell you uh, a different sense. 
so that, for example, we have as we have seen this conference, uh, some people try to be as faithful as possible to the human brain structure, and some people say it doesn't matter is the behavior that's the key. Some people say we don't even care about behavior; we want to know the principle behind those behaviors. Um, so you see that it's kind of like take a photo of someone from different angle. You cannot really say which one is the real photo. It's just a different picture. Uh, so that uh, I believe all of those research uh, has value, okay, even even though they will provide a different value uh, for for the society overall. But they are related for sure. Do would you be able to apply that the Hofstadter's theory of levels to a description of AGI? Yes, actually, that's what I have been talking about in a sense. Yeah, I just uh, take say camera or Google Map as an example. If you zoom in or zoom out uh, to a certain object at a different distance, you actually see very different thing. So that. Uh, uh, the brain modeling people is kind of like try to zoom in uh, to the human mind is very closely, so they see a lot of details. They see the uh, the neurons, the connections between them. They see the uh, larger scale structure of the brain and so on. Uh, so th they are going to they will have the advantage of having more details. Uh, but on the other hand, that some people actually prefer to observe an object from a distance, which also has its value, because that will give them a better idea about the big picture. Uh, some people believe that some of the details of the human brain may be irrelevant uh, when we are duplicating intelligence into computer. So they will rather uh, observe this mind thing from a distance, so that in this way they can capture the, the major components or the major property and ignore some of the detail. Uh, also, when you observe it from a distance, then your focus will be more on how this thing is related to the, uh, the world around it. Okay? When you're zooming in too closely, uh, you kind of like begin to ignore that aspect. So uh, the, the, the story uh, or the lesson or the claim I want to make with respect to, to this level of description thing is uh, some people, I think, naively assume the lowest level is always the best, uh, which is not true. Uh, on, on, the, on the other hand, of course, you can also not claim, you cannot claim the, the highest level is always the best because they give you a bigger picture. It just each level gave you a different picture and tell you a different story. To a large extent, it depends on uh, actually what's your goal, what's your uh, major interest. Do you really want to know uh, the human brain, or you just want to know the principle behind the human brain? This, to me, that's clearly two different uh, problems. Uh, so the, the best solution for one is not necessarily the best solution for the other. So at the current stage, I will, I will encourage different uh, approach within the ATI community. At the same time, I want to remind people about uh, their difference. Uh, to mix them together uh, will be a disaster. It will cause a lot of confusion. So how would you compare your approach to somebody like um, Ben Goetzel's open cog approach of the integrated architecture? Uh, that's actually in your keyword, the integrated architecture. Uh, what I call myself, uh, is, uh, as I said in today's talk, uh, I said my approach uh, should be called a unified approach, and Bengozo's approach is an integrated approach. So the key difference is he tried to use a lot of technology altogether, and he believed that's the best way to get intelligence. Because, uh, as common sense tells us, each technology has its strengths and weakness, so that it seems reasonable, say, to put everything together, so to use that that the strength of all of them to to cover the weakness, so that you have the most powerful uh, architecture, uh, which as a general principle I cannot say is wrong, 
But on the other hand, whenever you're putting multiple technology together, you're introducing additional complexity in uh, how, how to coordinate them, how to handle the internal consistency, concurrence, confliction, computation, and so on. Uh, on, on the other hand, I and a couple of our pro, uh, researchers in the AGI, uh, community prefer a unified approach, meaning that using a single technology. And uh, of course, that means uh, to uh, to use its strengths and uh, to tolerate some of its weakness, uh, and to pick a technology which is the most suitable one for for this job. Uh, it may not be able to cover uh, the whole area, but it will cover a very large uh, area. And uh, the good thing about this approach is the relative simplicity and consistency, so which is a property always favored by scientific research. Uh, now, I think it's too early to say which approach is better. But of course, if you ask me, I will say I'm better than Ben. I will, he will say the opposite. We have argued this for more than 10 years. I will continue this argument, I guess, uh, in, the, in the future, at least in the near future. But I think it's healthy uh, for, for the field. Uh, since it's supposed to be domain independent, uh, I cannot say you know it's best applied in one domain than the other. But on the other hand, yes, uh, it's designed not to for everything. Uh, for example, uh, currently I'm not going to suggest to use my reasoning system to do a theorem proving or game playing. Uh, instead, it's the, the, the thing I mentioned, the, the basic assumption is about insufficient knowledge and resource. Uh, my model works the best uh, in a domain where there's no way for you to assume absolute truth. Uh, everything is kind of like true to a degree uh, and may make some sense, but also uh, may have exceptions, uh, may give you a wrong answer. And also, you never really have the time uh, to evaluate all options. Okay, That's the situation where uh, I hope my system will work. That's the assumption. Uh, if you really, for some very simple problem, you really have sufficient knowledge and resource, uh, you should not use this system because that's not what it's designed for. Uh, frankly, no. Uh, well, of course, there are a lot of the, the, the thing, including the, the event you mentioned. All of them are interesting. Uh, but I don't think there is, as far as my research is concerned, I don't see there's any major dramatic uh, result which you know I never anticipated before and then now completely change my research direction. Uh, there is no such a thing. Uh, I will expect this, this uh, community of ADI to grow uh, bigger and stronger and more active and get more uh, involvement from other fields, other related fields. Uh, I do expect that, uh, but as I said before, I don't really, I cannot really predict uh, theoretical breakthrough or uh, major achievement. And uh, I also see there, there are more people get involved, and more projects start, and more projects get continued, and each of them is making the, its own progress according to its own assumption. Yes, I, I see that will happen. Uh, I don't really have any concrete uh, thing, but I can, I can mention a couple of things uh, that uh, I have been involved. You know, for example, how to apply my my technology to, to problems. Uh, so one example is uh, medical diagnostic. Uh, so that uh, some of my students have tried some very simple experiment uh, in using this kind of thing. Uh, to, you know, you provide uh, some information about the patient. The system can combine that information with background uh, medical information or knowledge and make some suggestion about what kind of uh, treatment the patient can get. Uh, it's not like an uh, expert system as in the 80s uh, because this, my approach will more focus on 
learning rather than you know try to build all the knowledge into the system, but、uh, rather like to learn, and、uh, which should be more flexible in dealing with different situations.、Um, another project、uh, I have been getting involved in early stage is to use this as an inference engine to process, say,、uh, knowledge in. Wikipedia or Semantic Web in general.、Uh, currently, you can only do search. So what you can get is basically a fact already mentioned somewhere online.、Uh, but if you really have an inference engine、uh, con connected to the to the web, then you can get a conclusion which is not mentioned anywhere, but is derived from the information provided by the web. That will be. A valuable application. I think I think this tool will be、uh, will serve as examples about how this kind of thing may be used in the future. Oh,、uh, there are some difference, but I don't want to overstress the difference.、Uh, but at least, for example, in the, in the domain I'm working in, say, a reasoning system. Uh, people like Chinese、uh, relatively easier to accept the the notion that、uh, there is no absolute truth, everything is true to a degree, or the meaning of a concept change over time or from context to context.、Uh, on the other hand, some people in the Western、uh, culture, they they kind of like、uh, still more tend to assume there's. There's absolute truth.、Uh, something is either black or white.、Uh, yeah, of course, it's a matter of degree. I, I don't want to overstress this, but yes, I, I will say the difference is there.、Uh, currently, the, the academic、uh, community is quite globalized. So even here in China, people evaluate、uh, achievement or result according to basically according to the Western standard. Even though privately, when they think, they still use Chinese way of thinking. But the way they publish, they 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 follow the global、uh, established standard. So I don't think there will be a major difference. It's hard to say. Yeah, if it's just something like a, a office assistant, I I don't think there will be a major problem for people to accept that. But some other application will be more. It will be a bigger, bigger issue. Yeah. What? What? Give me an example. What? What will people be sort of、um, concerned about? I don't know. Clearly,、uh, applications、uh, in military. Yeah, that's a concern. Now, privacy is another major concern. Security is a major concern. So, oh, any application in any of those domains.、Um, Will raise an issue. I think it's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes the discussion、uh, kind of like、uh, is based on confusing or even wrong assumptions, which will be a problem. For example, some people believe、uh, the the goal of AI just to duplicate human being in all aspects, and then if that's really the case, then of course that will cause a lot of social problem. But according to my opinion, there's no foundation for that kind of AI to happen in the first place. I think some job will be lost, but at the same time, some new job will be created.、Uh, at the current stage, it's really hard to say which number will be bigger. Just like, just like, take computer as an example.、Uh, some people lost the job because of a computer, and some people get job exactly because of a computer. So I will say AI will have the same consequence. It just, which is which, yeah. Just like I,、uh, every new major technology, it will all be the same. When do you think something close to、um, human level intelligence is likely to come about in the next century, or the next fifty years, or beyond? Again, it's hard to say. Yeah. Next century, I will say yes, but、uh, maybe sooner than that.
<laughs> uh, well, maybe I don't know whether you know. I actually criticized that uh, two days ago in the workshop uh, he, right here. Uh, I, I, I have high respect to you know, Marcus' work, and it's very elegant, uh, but it's fundamentally different from my work. Uh, in actually, I think we are working on different problem, even though there is some overlap. Uh, the special difference or the basic difference is the, the one I mentioned at the beginning. I said I assume uh, insufficient knowledge and resource. He assumes some very reliable knowledge and the infinite amount of resource. Uh, as a result, I, I, I will say that uh, we are actually working on two different problems. So that uh, I have respect to his result, but his, his result uh, doesn't really help me much in my work because I cannot take his uh, result and apply it in my system just because the situation is completely different. I fully agree with the basic idea of hierarchical structure, and I'm, in my system, it's the same thing. Uh, it's just not uh, at the level of, uh, say, brain uh, structure level. Uh, that related to our previous discussion. Uh, they are observing the human mind in a much closer distance compared to my observation. So I don't try to duplicate brain structure at all. but. Uh, uh, for me, the conceptual structure also need to be hierarchical. Uh, so in that sense, I completely agree with the, their conclusion. Okay. Do you think Ben Gertz might just like take your architecture and plug it into Open Code one day while you're not looking? <laughs> he already did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, when we work together, uh, I develop uh, a version of the reasoning system, uh, which is the the previous version of his uh, PLN. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. So he already did, and and but uh, he only kept the part he liked, and he threw the part out, and uh, which he didn't like. But I think he's completely wrong. So he know that. That's that's. Public knowledge, yeah. Do you think the, the, what are people most confused about with regard to artificial general intelligence within even the AGI community? Uh, it's a goal. What, what this research is about, uh, want to achieve and can achieve. Uh, again, f from outside people, many people still think uh, our goal is to pass the Turing test. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, within the community, it's only a very small percent of people take that as the goal, or completely duplicate the human mind, or something like that. That's the belief that uh, there is absolute truth. Yeah, uh, when I was very young, I was raised up in an you know, environment where I believe truth in science, in, uh, in the society or in the world. Uh, later I realized that uh, there is no absolute truth uh, in any of those places. But it doesn't mean everything goes. So what I have been doing is to find, you know, if there is no truth to depend on, what else we can depend on? Well, you depend on regularity. Yes, but uh, all regularity are kind of relative, not absolute. Right? We, we never have re absolute re regularity. Yeah, but we still have regularity. Yes, that's the point. Mm -hmm.